seems a bizarre idea that grass could be dangerous for horses to eat. But horses have evolved to eat very high fibre grasses and not the highly improved pastures we have developed for the production of cattle and sheep. This video focuses on the problems we find in Australia, as well as both South and North America, associated with the grazing of many pastures sown with imported grasses. In parts of Africa, these troublesome pastures are actually native species, but they are just as bad for horses because they all contain a natural horse poison called oxalate. You may have heard of this problem as big head, and you probably think that it doesn't affect you. But the effects of oxalate are not restricted to the bones. The whole animal is affected, and the high oxalate pastures can occur all over Australia. When we were first invited to Australia to get involved, that was back in 2012, we were led to believe it was a problem just of tropical Australia, and that is where we conducted our research. One of our trial sites in Black or Western Queensland is typical of land sown with buffalo grass. This map certainly makes it look like a northern tropical problem, though it creeps well south around Adelaide. Our second trial site was in Mwumba on the coastal plain of northern New South Wales. This is in the heart of Soteria grasses, but look just how far south Soteria gets. And the third main problem grass is Kakuyu, and that also gets a long way south. The name Big Head is very misleading because skeletal deformation in the head is one of the last signs of the disease to become apparent. We prefer to talk about oxalate poisoning and we're delighted to discover that a researcher from the University of New England is also using this term. The better indicators of a problem are difficult behaviour and poor mobility. Ollie was one of the Moomba trial horses. These pictures show his depressed demeanour, lumps and bumps on the forehead and the noticeably broad but soft bone tissue on the nose. The grazing muzzle wasn't there to restrict his feed intake, it was there to stop him biting anybody who came too close to him. Ollie was so difficult, it took the vet 45 minutes to take the first blood sample. The vet sent a junior technician to take the second sample a month later, and he had settled down so much it took just a few seconds. Ollie had poor mobility, shifting lameness and a short stepping gait. Two horses at our Blackall trial site were so short stepping, we assumed that they had chronic bone problems in the joints. We chose not to include them in our trial because we assumed their problems would be irreversible or very slow to resolve. We were wrong. Jill Peck gave the supplement anyway and they recovered just like our trial horses. The traditional view has been that calcium oxalate is not absorbed properly and so the horses become calcium deficient. And certainly their bones demineralise and they struggle to maintain blood calcium levels in the later stages. So this was a very logical conclusion. We blood and urine tested all the horses in our trials before supplementing them and they all seemed to be struggling with calcium in the blood. Different horses were using different hormones to maintain blood calcium levels. Some used parathyroid hormone, others preferred the active form of vitamin D and some used both. None were excreting calcium crystals in their urine, so so far this did look like a lack of absorbable calcium. But that picture changed when the horses were retested after a month on a collated calcium supplement. All horses were showing signs of improved behaviour and mobility. Facial deformities were already improving as the bones remineralised. The parathyroid hormone and vitamin D levels normalised, and most interestingly, they started to excrete calcium carbonate and calcium oxalate crystals in their urine. They were no longer retaining all the calcium they possibly could. All the trial horses showed improved mobility, behaviour, and a substantial reduction in aggressiveness or difficult behaviour. These urine results were fascinating, Firstly, the idea that calcium oxalate wasn't absorbed was clearly wrong. They couldn't excrete it in their urine if it hadn't been absorbed first. Secondly, they clearly had enough calcium in their diet because they were remineralizing the bones and maintaining blood calcium levels while excreting the calcium simultaneously. And we had reduced the total amount of calcium in the diet by taking away all of the traditional calcium supplements recommended for horses with big head and replacing only a fraction of that with collated calcium. Our conclusion from this and other research projects is that collated calcium helps to regulate the functioning of cells that use an ancient technology called calcium signalling, but not all collated calcium is created equal. The collated calcium in modern supplements contains quite large molecules like calcium gluconate. Calcium oxalate is also a chelate, but a very small one, so it is likely that these molecules are managed quite differently in the cells. The good news is that supplementing with collated calcium seems to be all we need to do to restore an adequate amount of the good stuff. Let us end this with feedback from Greg Peck in Blackall, Kylie from the National Horse and Pony Rescue, and Di, who has now adopted the previously depressed and aggressive Ollie. Okay, so 
So when we got Ollie off the track, he presented with a, a lump in the centre of his forehead. I thought it was just a birth defect, that's how his head was. Um, two weeks after bringing him off the track and putting him in pasture, we noticed his nose had gotten really thick. And that's when his lameness got a lot worse. Also, uh, probably three to four weeks after that, I went to feed one morning and had a massive lump on his head. We thought, we just assumed he'd been kicked by a horse. But the lump didn't go down over several weeks. Um, that's when I spoke to Trevor about it and it was a big head lump. And it, it was quite large and very prominent on his face and it came up almost overnight. Just from him going from a stable to a paddock with ceteria grass, his big head just flared up in weeks, which is quite fast. It doesn't usually present quite that quickly. So about six weeks into the trial, we noticed the two heads prominent uh, two clumps on his head had started to go down. The thickening in his nose had gone down by about half and his shifting lameness was almost gone. It took about four months um, for the lumps to completely go. About four months for, yeah, for the lumps to completely go and after that he was just striding out beautifully. The thickness in the nose did take a little bit longer but we did load Ollie longer than normal because his case was just so severe but yeah in four months we saw a horse that looked normal i i guess malcolm i wouldn't be here where i'm at riding him and this is his fourth ride um without full calm and collected it just wouldn't have happened So how did you feed the supplements to them, Jill, the horses in um, general? I mixed it in copper meal and just wet it enough that it stuck. I didn't add um, just a nice um, moist mix and just, yeah, they just loved it. So that suits your situation where yes. you might need a house in those little stables there? Mm. Yeah, they, they, yes, and they're all in their own feeder so you know that they get all of what I'm putting out. So what general benefits did you see with them on the Core Calm and Collective? Can we just have a summary of those? Probably the, the best thing is both she and, and um, uh, um, Kitty were just not the horse you wanted to ride if you were going to do a big day's work. They both had their problems, short stepping, sluggish um, and just generally painful to ride. But now they're, yeah, they did the whole last of our weaning. They did it every second day every second day and um, yeah you were not, not wishing the heck that it was their day to be ridden because they're going well. Did you notice any other changes at all? Well Greg said this one's taking interest in cattle now whereas before she just lay her ears back and I don't want to and now she'll follow a beast everywhere and she's um, she's good for cutting out and she's keen whereas before she didn't have any wish to be in there at all. So you just gave her a change of outlook on the mm, Totally, yeah. So you weren't getting it from Trevor, you didn't have no input, didn't have that arrangement and you were out here. Where would you need to go to get it? Um, we were sourcing a, um, a horse calcium mix from um, either Blackall with the rural traders in there or Roma. Um, and it, it, it was probably good, but we didn't notice any in our horses and they still had, they didn't, um, they didn't want to work. It, it probably kept them from being totally crippled, but it certainly didn't help them in their um, attitude towards work because they were obviously still very calcium deficient. One of the horses that I had started with Cool Karma Collected, uh, he was an old horse and um, during our master and with the drought I just didn't have the time to persevere with him and he reverted back to being very short stepping um, so I just thought well we've got to stick with the horses we work and uh, so he's turned out but he seems he quite happy in the party he um, he's not totally crippled up like he was and he he hasn't gone back that far but before I stopped giving it he's actually started to canter around he'd canter home with the other horses and then I stopped it and within probably five weeks I noticed he was back to the trough. So when it starts to rain after the dry and the grass starts to come on, 
what sort of time frame and sequence there is, is there from when it starts to rain to you starting to notice maybe something going wrong with your horses and through to when you start seeing the lumps and bumps on what sort of time frame? I think it's as soon as about three weeks. And it's then you're pretty quickly. Yeah. Then you're seeing what? Um, the, the short stepping again. You know, the, the sort of attitude problem, the unwillingness to do anything for you. Um, but we certainly won't be letting that happen again. And how long does it take to start seeing lumps and bumps? Well, young horses, you see it really quickly. Um, I've had foals here, and within 12 months you'd notice the nose swelling up. Older horses, it usually it's more in the back legs, um, short stepping, stiffness. But it, it always, with younger horses, uh, it's always the head that you notice first, always. Yeah, well, since she's been on break free, yeah, she, she's, her muscular uh, movements have become a lot freer. And before it was a, obviously for her to extend was a, was a an effort, and she was stiff. You know, that's probably the best way to say it. So yeah, um, and since she's been on break free, she's she's lost all of that stiffness, and obviously. You know, it's not an effort for her to extend, and uh, the fact that she's muscular, her muscular movements are easy. She's obviously enthusiastic about working, so it's just, um, it's just, um, it's not an effort for her. Yeah. Do you think she's any better at actually focusing on the cow when you, you know if you're trying to bring a cow back into the group or whatever you're trying to do with it, or or mm. cut a cow out or whatever you're doing? Is she actually? mentally more able to, to cope with that? Yeah, I, I, well I think it's um, like she does actually have a certain amount of natural ability, like she's got cow in her um, because of her breeding but um, but before it was difficult for her to do that because she didn't have the, the muscular coordination to actually achieve any of that so now she's got that freeness that yeah, she, what she's thinking she can actually do, before she may have been thinking it but she couldn't, it was hard for her to do it so now what she's thinking about, she can actually do it because it's easy and it's not an effort for her. So yeah, generally sort of stepping out like she just never really grabbed enough ground before. She was always short stepping and you think it's just the way she is, but it's obviously stiffness in her shoulders, whatever it was that was holding her back. It was a, it was a physical thing that now she grabs a lot of ground, can walk at six mile an hour or whatever, you know, that's around about five, six mile an hour, which is normal sort of stock horse pace. But before it was an effort for her, but she took little pony steps and and um, almost like riding a pony. And continuing yeah. sound. Yeah, and continuing sound. But but sort of yeah. Um, but that's I think like anything. If um, if you, if um, a human's always got a sore knee or something, it plays on you. And and in for her case, it was always probably sore shoulders, and um, and it was playing on her on her to uh, to be trying to do things. She just couldn't do what she wanted to do. Yeah. I think that's basically where it comes down to. Collated Calcium Technology is available in three products now made in Australia and they are Break Free with specific application instructions for oxalate poisoning Cool Calm and Collected for general behaviour and performance issues whether or not oxalates are involved Race Max to improve stamina and recovery in racehorses Equifees are passionate about helping you to get the very best from your horse and other aspects of the diet can interfere. Feel free to contact us and discuss your horse, its issues and its diet.